Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa, and I do have the illustrious Mr. Kiriov with me. Say hello. Uh, oh. That is my official title. Hello, everyone. Hello. So, yeah, we've been playing the Overwatch beta for a considerable amount of time. In fact, combined, we've played the game for well over 100 hours. I was trying to work out how much I played the game for, and I think it's around about 60 to 70 hours. It's not 100, so I can't claim that on my own. But with Mr. Kiriov, we can we can easily claim that. Easily. 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 Very he's easily. <laughs> yeah, very easily. <laughs> I mean, he's played it easily the same amount of time as me. So, yeah, so what we're going to do is talk about the game and how, what, how it's sort of developed and um, where we see it going. Because I think we're in a pretty unique position. There's not that many people who've got this much game time in the game currently. So, I think the best place to start is with the heroes. Now, we're not going to start with Genji to begin with. We'll talk about him at the end because Genji wasn't actually in the game to begin with. Um... And I think the same will apply to the other heroes, so Mei and D.Va, who were added after BlizzCon. So, the first one we're going to talk about is McCree. Now, I'll set the scene with McCree. He is a cowboy with a Desert Eagle, if anybody plays Counter-Strike or a D-Eagle, uh, which can fire six shots rapidly, which is really strong. His E is a flashbang, so he can stun people, but it's very short range, so he has to be point-blank range to throw this at you. It stuns everyone for like a second, but that's enough in Overwatch to just wreck somebody. <laughs> yeah. Especially with McCree, because you can just right-click and... Oh, my God. But initially, he had very strong long-range damage, very strong medium damage, and very strong short-range damage. But what they did is they've nerfed his long-range damage because he could out-snipe the snipers, which is ridiculous because he's so good in close range. So where do you feel McCree is right now, um, Mr. Kiryoff, with his nerf? I think I... I'd say he's in a, a much better place. When we first started playing and he had that long-range damage, coming up against uh, a McCree was kind of nightmarish because it felt like no matter where you attacked him from, you know, what, whatever range you came at him from, he could kill you before you could kill him. He seems a lot more reasonable now. He still has that really good burst, especially at close range, with that, with that right-click ability where he just unloads all six bullets into you at point-blank range. That is really devastating, but he is a lot more manageable. And he's kind of, I think in a way, for me, he kind of feels like he fulfills two different roles. He's very good at taking out other other damage classes, but, you know, not quite, he's not, like, geared towards just that. But he can fulfill a slight anti-tank role if he needs to as well. He's like a, I think he's like a, a quite a well-rounded hero. He did definitely need that, that range nerf, though. It, yeah, because... I, I agree with that. That was ridiculous, because without the nerf, he... He had such a presence <laughs> where, like, as soon as you seen the McCree, it was like, oh, God, you were going to get shot by McCree. It, I mean, I was playing a lot of Widowmaker um, when I first picked up the game, and McCree would just wreck me, and it would be quite frustrating. Like, How is this guy killing me? And then I started playing McCree because then it was like, what's the point in playing Widowmaker? Because McCree's just as good at range. You just don't have to mess around with his scope. And it's like, yeah, it was a bit ridiculous. But I think as well, talking about his ultimate, it, it is a fairly good ultimate, that is. If you get it at the right time, where a lot of the ultimates do come down to timing, you can change the game with that rapidly, especially when it's like um, a desperate defense on a payload map and people are on the payload, and they're, they're really trying to stop you getting to it, and suddenly you come around the corner as McCree, and it's, it's high noon, and you just get, like, four kills. It's like, oh. It, so is, it can be quite powerful like yeah, that. Yeah, it is quite strong, but it does also have its downsides for him as well. Like, he, he his movement goes right down when he's using it, and it's, of course... He starts to glow of, as well. Yeah, and, of course, it's line of sight based. So if you're right near yeah. a wall or right near a doorway and you hear it, your best bet is to just go straight like go behind whatever you're closest to because then he won't be able to hit you with it if he does pull it off from a decent position he will wreck the entire team and the thing is when you when you first start playing and that happens it's like oh my god what the hell this guy just he just ruined all of us yeah. but you very quickly work out that he can't really go anywhere whilst he's doing it so he's got to be in a good position to begin with and if you are anywhere near cover you can get you can get out of it so when I say there's no excuse to dying to it, it's like if you can get away, then you're absolutely fine. If you're running around the open, you will absolutely get destroyed by it. So you've got to be you've got to be careful with your positioning when McCree is wandering around, especially if he hasn't used it for a bit, because you know that he's going to wait until there's a good number of people in front of him, and then you're going to get shot in the head. So you've got to be careful. It's uh, it's an interesting point that as well, because it's just becoming accustomed to what goes on in the game. When you hear high noon, you know you, you know you need to find cover, but you don't know that initially, so you die. Um, when you hear junk rats rip tire go, mee, 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 you know the tires coming, so you need to pay attention to areas where you think it could come from because you can shoot it, but you don't know that to begin with. Hanzo is probably the the best example of this. His ultimate 
I think it's one of the worst ultimates in the game because it's so easily you can just dodge that really easy yeah. and you know where yeah. he's going to fire it. It's 90% of the time going to be fired at the payload if it's a payload map or at the point if it's a control point map and you can easily avoid it but to begin with you don't realise that and everybody seems to flop around the payload and the points and Hanzo can get loads of kills and can feel quite strong. Anyway, let's move on to Farah. She's another one who's had a little bit of a nerf. So Farah is, uh, she has a an ability where she can rapidly ascend she's got like a jump pack and then when she's in the air she can hover around she can actually fly when she doesn't have a jump ability available with spacebar but she doesn't go that high she just sort of slowly rises but if you use it in conjunction with the boost you can kind of fly around fairly good she's got a rocket launcher much like the soldier in team fortress 2 and her e is a knockback ability which is it's fairly good because you can push people away from you if they're too close or you want to knock people off the map and, and things like that. Yeah. But her main strength is, is her rocket launcher. And she is... Uh, she's, I think she's situational. I wouldn't say she's somebody you would include in every team because she is easily countered by people like McCree, Widowmaker, yeah, Hanzo. Yeah. Anyone who can do fairly good damage to her when they're, you know, at whatever range away from her because she's quite easy to hit when she's floating in the air. Yeah, she doesn't have. She does not quick. have any decent movement speed when she's in the air. She she very much sort of. She doesn't hover as such, especially when she runs out of fuel. She starts to drop, but she's yeah, not. She sort of she, drops really slow. Yeah, she's not really able to dodge. You know, once she's up there, she's up there, and she either needs to kill the person who's attacking her, or she'll get killed herself. Really, I think Farrah's biggest thing is just her ability to flank from pretty much any angle. The ability to jump into the air and end up above someone is is really quite good. But to make it so that it's not ridiculously overpowered, she, you know, her, her weapon doesn't fire that quickly. And you've got to, you can't got to lead where your projectile is going to hit. So if you can't, you can't just aim at someone who's running because by the time the rocket hits, they will be away from where you've aimed. You've got to lead it into the target every time. She is, well, she, say she did have a minor nerf. She, her reload time was, renerf, uh, was nerfed, I believe. Yeah. Uh, not a reload, sorry, a fire time. So it's slightly reduced. You do see with Farah a very strong combo with Mercy because Mercy has a damage buff ability and Mercy can fly. Um, well, if, if Farah takes off into the air, Mercy can close range on her with her left shift ability. And then when if Mercy holds spacebar down, Mercy floats. I think it's on Wings of Angels or something like that. And she floats yeah. when she's in the air. So she can get into the air with Farah. And if she damage buffs Farah, Farah is really strong. I mean, Farah is really good for taking out people like Bastion or anyone who's entrenched in a corner. Um, Torbjorn is... She's kind of okay for dealing with him, but his turret will still attack you if there's nothing yeah. else to be attacked. Yeah. Uh, I think she's okay, Farrah, though. Like, she, I do think her she's ultimate, situational. I d yeah, well, yeah, I, her ult, let's talk about that. I think one of, funnily enough, the biggest strength, I think, for Farrah is that ultimate. If she can pull it off, what it does is it, she hovers in the air and fires a massive barrage of, of rockets at you. And it's it's a huge AoE thing, so it, it covers a whole area, and she can direct where it goes as well. It does a ton of damage. If you if you play it right, you can wipe out the entire team. But you have to play it right. And there are weaknesses to it. Like, she's stationary while she does it. So if the team is sufficiently spread out and she starts doing it and someone sees her, they can, you know, they can shoot her down before the ult finishes. And also audio cues. You, you'll hear, Justice reigns from above! And then you know that she's up there. So you'll yeah. turn around and try and take her out. And again, I've noticed as we get... As you get better at the game... You, she can be taken out immediately if the team are like looking for it. But there are still times where she does get you because, as you say, she can flank quite well. If she, I mean, if she jumps around the side and suddenly does it and you don't expect it, it can be quite devastating to the team. And, of course, yeah. there are people like D.Va. Um, Genji, as well, can deflect the missiles back to her and kill her. But D.Va can shoot them out of the sky, so she can negate it with her defense matrix ability. So, yeah, Farrah's okay. Next up is Reaper. Now, Reaper is the one we were laughing about at the start, saying he's the guy... Well, I, I say at the start, like when you first start playing the game, you, you'll hate Reaper because you'll think Reaper's yeah. OP because Reaper kills everybody. Yeah, he's. I I'm, personally, I'm, I'm drawn to tank characters. I really like playing the tank heroes in Overwatch, and Reaper is is pure anti tank. His his weapons do a huge amount of damage close range because they're they're shotguns basically, and of course, the more of the projectiles land, the more damage he does. And so, especially as Reinhardt when I first started playing the game, I was running around, Reaper would come up behind me, shoot me twice in the back from point-blank range, and I would die, and I would sit there and absolutely lose it. I'd be like, how, what is going on? How, how did he kill me? What is this? He comes across as very strong early on, but 
like all of them, he can be dealt with. And it's it's a case of... I feel like Reaper is a, a character that... Well, a hero that you need to manage as the, as the opposing team, as opposed to just try and chase down. He's got a couple of abilities that really help him flank and really help him get away. One of them is he can teleport, so he can get on, like, high places and ledges, and he can get round the side of certain maps by crossing over like water or terrain that you wouldn't normally be able to walk on without dying. Um, he can go invincible. He floats off the air, he moves slightly quicker, and shots just pass through him. He doesn't gain any health when he does that, but he doesn't lose health either, because, you know, all these shots go through him, and he, you can use that to get away. When you first start playing, his ability to just appear behind you, and then shoot you nearly to death if you survive, and then float away before he can die is infuriating. But... As you start to play more, he's okay. He's a very good anti-tank hero, but he's nowhere near as strong as he first feels. And it's just no, a case yeah, of I, learning I how to applies. manage him. Yeah, I think that applies to a lot as well. I mean, again, with Reaper, his ultimate is one of these ultimates you'll see, and it'll be like, oh, they'll just be Reaper plays of the game. 90% of your early game experience in Overwatch, because all he has to do is hit E, teleport in, and then press Q. And his ultimate, he just fires his shotguns in AoE around himself, 360, and it just puts the shotgun damage on everyone. And it kills everybody, because like, he's such a high damage hero. Yeah. But as you say, there are ways of dealing with him. And very quickly, we started to realize, okay, he's not that powerful. I mean, one of the things he does do, uh, which is one of his passive, well, it's his passive. When he kills you, you drop like a soul gem thing, and he, if he collects that, it heals him. So it does give him yeah. a little bit of sort of backline sustain. So if he teleports into the back line to take out, say, Widowmakers, because he can kill anybody at close range. Like, nobody can take him on at close range. Maybe McCree can, if McCree stuns him. But everybody else, it's very difficult. Like, if, it, yeah. if you get jumped by a Reaper, he's probably going to kill you. But Reaper can only do damage at close range. He cannot attack you at long range. He just does no damage. It, he's, yeah. His range is about a meter after that. Once you, I mean, when <laughs> yeah. you start to realize this, you can deal with him pretty well. So if he comes at you, you'll start using your character's escape mechanics or whatever to get away from him, or like you know maybe move back towards your team or do something. He is manageable, but at the start, yeah, not that much. Yeah, I, I, one of the things I like to say about Reaper is at the start, if you if you've watched the cinematic trailer, which I'm assuming you have, where Reaper is repeatedly shooting Winston and Winston keeps staggering back and can't defend himself, that's how you feel when you first come up against Reaper. It feels exactly like that. You are just getting pummeled. But then, eventually, it just becomes a case of Reaper's over there. Okay, we need to move over here so he's not in the close range. And you can kill him just like anyone else. He's not that scary. He just seems it at the start. The next one we've got is Soldier 76. Now, he... Uh, I can probably be considered as the most bland hero. And I think he's supposed to be like this because he's a bit of a piss take on the typical soldier man from various soldier shooter game number five or whatever the hell is out now. Um, so he's got an assault rifle which fires 25 bullets, automatic, fully automatic. It's fairly accurate for the first couple of shots, and then it's got a bit of a spread on it. Um, he has a, well, his E ability puts down a healing field on the ground, which heals everybody around him who stands into it and heals him as well, and it's actually a pretty good heal. And he can sprint with left shift. And his right click is a helix missile, which is just a rocket he fires out of his... Uh, assault rifle, which does quite a bit of damage if it hits you. I mean, yeah. it can kill a lot of squishy people with one hit, but it's hard to hit. It's got travel time and all of that. So, I... He's one of my favourite heroes because he's really good for... I mean, I see him as this guy who's dead good for flanking. He's got self-sustain, so you can sort of set up a soldier nest. You can run to the side of the map where you know the enemy's coming from or maybe you want to flank the payload. You can hit your E, drop your heel down on the ground and start engaging people because if they start shooting you back... You're just going to outheal the damage unless they get, you know, a full powered widow make a headshot on you or something, you know, or an ultimate hits you and kills you. You're there and you're almost like this nuisance, constantly damaging people, almost tickling them to death unless you hit them with a yeah, rocket. Yeah. But you're, you're really annoying, like really, really annoying. And I've got some of my, I think I got like a 39 elimination kill streak with Soldier, which shows you how crazy he can be. Like he's this guy who is always there, always putting the damage out. He's not flashy. Um, you can win play of the game quite a bit with his ultimate because his ultimate is a aimbot. So all it does is it locks onto the heads of everyone. So when you fire, your gun automatically fires at their heads, but it's still firing its normal bullets. So it doesn't do that much damage. So you still have to like focus on people for a while. And if you run out in front of a team and there's like five people and the whole, well, the whole team's there, like say six people, it locks onto all their heads, but it only shoots at one. 
like the, the nearest one you're looking at. You, you can tell which one it's locked onto because it's like a big highlighted crosshair on their head and you'll shoot at them. But of course, you might not want to shoot at that person. Maybe you want to shoot at somebody else and then you get killed. I found the best way to use this is there's actually a video on the channel of this where I sort of got them from behind and took out a load of the team with it, which is fairly rare. But I find myself using this for 1v1 quite a lot, especially if it's Tracer or somebody who's dead quick, like Genji. You pop your ultimate yeah. and then you don't have to worry about aiming. You can take them out. So, it, I, I mean, I know you've not played him that much, Kiri, but I know he is bland. I think he is bland. Yeah, He's really I, bland. He's okay to play and he's a nuisance and i think he does he works well against people like farah when she's in the air and he's quite good against mccree if it's not point blank range and he's quite good against tracer he's really good against um, like somebody like junkrat because they don't have the range to take him on because he's soldier's like pretty good medium range i'd say it's okay it's okay close range but his close range is about the same as his medium range his long range is not bad, it's not amazing, but it's enough to just poke people away. So if you see a Widowmaker set up or a Hanzo, you can hit them, say, oh, I know you're there, and they'll sort of move out of the way. Unless, of course, you hit them with a rocket. But yeah, what do you think about him? I, the, the few times I've played him, I've actually quite enjoyed playing him, but you are absolutely right, he is not a flashy hero. He, he You won't see him jumping about the map, you won't see him you know, flying into the air or putting huge shields up or anything. He's just, I think he's a very good... He's a very good sort of support nuisance. You can you can really mess up the enemy team by having a, a good soldier on your team because he may not run in and get all the kills, but he will be involved in like all of them because he's whittling people down all the time. And you have to really go out of your way to get rid of him because of that heal. And with that rocket that he, that he fires out, the helix rocket, if you're going to go against him one-on-one, -on -one, you need to be either really good, really confident, or he needs to be damaged already, because he can burst you with that, and he can heal himself, yeah. and he can sprint away if he needs to anyway, so it's like you need you to... You can fire it into the floor. I mean, what I tend to do, like if Trace or somebody gets really onto me close range, and I don't have the ultimate up or whatever, I fire the helix rocket into the floor, because it's quite a quick cooldown, and it blows Tracer up. It's like, go away, Tracer. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 I, I like him. I like him, but I just... I mean, I think if you're a Counter-Strike player or, you know, somebody who's played FPS like that and you're coming into Overwatch, McCree and Soldier are probably the two traditional FPS characters. Like, you, you'd feel at home with yeah, them because, yeah. like, with McCree, you'd be like, oh, i got a Deagle and Soldier, you'd be like, oh, I've got, a, you know, an AK or something like that. All right, so moving on to Tracer. She is the face of the game. And... She has Blink, which she can bring... Well, she's got three charges of this, and she can rapidly bring, Blink three times in quick succession if it's all, all charges are available. She can Blink only on the horizontal plane, so she can't Blink up into the air or anything like that. So she can Strafe Blink and Blink forward and all of that. Her E rewinds time and also heals her if she had health before... Well, at the moment, the rewind goes back to. So if you've got 150 health... I think she's 150 health. If you've got max health anyway as Tracer, you go in and you blink around, you, you say have a fight with Reaper and uh, you're down to 50 health or whatever. You press E, you'll go back and you'll have full health. So you, you do have sustain like that. And her ultimate is a time bomb, which is this sticky bomb, which kills everybody apart from Reinhardt, Winston, Zaya and, um, well, and Roadhog. And probably doesn't kill Diva when she's in a mech. But it kills everybody else with one hit. It's got a very minor AoE on it, so it's not very... Like it's not going to blow the whole team up, but you can use it to blow like Bastion up. That's what it's really good for. Or like yeah. take out a certain DPS you want to get rid of because you can jump in dead quick, drop the bomb and get out. And her weapons are two very close range, I guess, um, automatic pistols. So what do you think about Tracer? And she, she is very close range as well. She's another one. Yeah. I think at the start, she she kind of feels a little bit like a Reaper. She's she's a nuisance. And she'll get in She's really always close, killing you at the start. And she's yeah. always killing you because she, she can get on top of you. She unloads into you at close range. And then she's gone. She disappears. And she's either rewound or she's blinked to the side or the other side. Or she might have blinked through you or whatever. And then you, you end up getting killed by her. But for she is she has to be up close. She does not do damage from distance at all, in the same way as Reaper. The guns just don't do enough damage, and they're not accurate enough at range for her to sit back and try and, you know, drill people from halfway across the map. And, I don't know, I, I quite like her, but once once you get used to her movement and the way that, you know, she, she blinks around the place, she's not that she's not that difficult to deal with. Like, you can come across a really good traitor who is, who's nigh on unkillable, 
but you need to have really good map awareness to to use a fully because you'll see people like blinking into walls or blinking backwards into stuff or they'll rewind too early so you know they've only lost like 50 health but then they've used the rewind but they're not actually that far away and they end up getting shot again she's a pain when you first start but as you get a bit better and you get more used to her movement she's not she's not so bad I do think she's a really good character for, in a similar way to Soldier, for harassing the team though. I do like it when people sort of use that aspect of it because you can jump in and you can strafe people and you can jump out. And if you if you do it right, you can be a real like thorn in the enemy's side because she's just so manoeuvrable. She can just get around so quickly. It's like, oh god, Trace is here. Oh, god, she's just oh no, she's disappeared again. You know, you, you can't see it's a, like a dodge tank. Like she's in there messing you up and you. you you're like, oh god, Trace is in, you need to get rid of her. But yeah. I think that's the initial impression people get. It's like, she's, where the hell is she? Oh god, she's killed me. This is really doing my head in. You know, I've watched people on Twitter who were getting access to the game after I, you know, played it for two weeks or so. And they're like, oh god, Trace is OP. Oh god, Bastion's OP. And I'm thinking, they're not. You just don't know how to deal with them. And yeah. we kind of were in that position when the game first came out. Um, yeah, Tra it's just a mobility which scares people because she comes in so quick. She appears to blow you away and then runs off and you're like where the hell is she gone and then she's on you again and again and then you're dead and it's like trace is op this is a load of shit once you start getting used to her though you realize that trace has to be on top of you to kill you trace is never yeah. really going to go after anyone who's got any health because she's not really going to be able to kill them and then you can kind of get ready to accept trace and then try and deal with her and she becomes i found anyway much less effective but that's probably because of genji who is a bit ridiculous but we'll talk about genji later on yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move into the defensive heroes now. And the first one off is Bastion. So, well, I'll let you go into this one, Mr. Carry-Off. Bastion. Well, Bastion's got... He's a hero with two modes. He can either run around with a... I guess you could call it like an assault rifle. Um, yeah, which is, it's an inaccurate assault rifle. Yeah, it's, it's okay at close range, but you're not going to kill anyone at any distance with it. Um, but his real strength lies in the fact that he can transform into a turret. So he becomes stationary. He's got a limited range of fire like a limited firing arc he's going to only turn a certain amount to the left or right or up or down um, but he does have a def like a defensive shield that goes over the front of him so you end up with a load more health from attacks hitting you, you know, head on and his gun when he's deployed is an absolute monster it's, it's got the highest damage thing in the game it, it yeah. will just kill everyone it rips through yeah, anything it's, it's got tons of ammo it can keep firing for ages it does a load of damage when it hits you and at the very start, when you come up against a Bastion, you immediately think to yourself, oh my god, how are we supposed to even deal with this? Added to which as well, he can repair himself too. So he can self-repair. So when he gets damaged, if there's a lull in the action, he's you know mowed down a few people, there's nothing coming, he can fix any damage that was done to him. His ultimate turns him into a tank, which means he's mobile, and he fires uh, like blast projectiles, so they don't just hit one target they hit everything around wherever they land so he can he's really good for if the enemy team is clustered together and you've got your ultimate up you can do serious damage with him all that being said he's really scary at the start because you... well i was the guy playing bastion at the start and i was like oh look bastion i'll have a go of him and i sat on the payload and i just killed everyone because everyone yeah. just kept running around the corner and i'm like well this is ridiculous and you know people would be like blah 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 I'd see people moan about teams that contained more than one Bastion. It was like, oh God, they just settled Bastions in the corner and we couldn't get in there. And it's like, well, maybe not if you're, you're new to the game. But when you realise that Bastion, like, well, like Junkrat makes a mess of Bastion in almost yeah. any situation. <laughs> yeah. And then you realise Farah can wreck him. Tracer can wreck him with her ultimate. Uh, even Reaper could get in there and wreck him. Um, Widowmaker wrecks him because often she'll be in a place where she can see him and he can't see her and she can shoot maybe around the shield soldier can fire his missile into his shield he becomes well he becomes crap and i'm gonna just throw torbjorn into this as well because blizzard know this and blizzard have acknowledged this that bastion and torbjorn are strong to begin with where like when people first start playing the game and then become really shit yeah. later on because yeah. they don't they have no impact. They're too easily countered. I mean, with Torbjorn, so what he does is he's the little dwarf guy with a rivet gun, which doesn't really do that much damage, although it's not too bad. Um, and I think he's got two fire modes, but really he's all about the turret. So he deploys his turret. Um, he collects scrap, which is off dead players, and he can turn the scrap into armor to throw on the ground for teammates to pick up. Or he can use the scrap to upgrade his turret. And his turret, much like Team Fortress 2, gets upgraded level 1, level 2, level 3, and it has missiles on it and all kinds of stuff, and it ends up being quite powerful when it's upgraded. 
But the problem is it's a turret and it's stationary and he can't move it. So when it's in a position, if the team quickly break the first position, well, Torbjorn's got to go and set up again. And that means if he got it up to level two, let's say, well, his, his turret is... Well, it ain't level two no more. He's yeah. setting up kind of again. Um, but I mean, he's his so ultimate, easily countered. And he's also... Yeah, like, it, yeah. it like overcharges him. So he can attack quicker. He can repair his turret quicker. And unlimited he gets unlimited scrap. scrap. Well, think, yeah. So he can... You can like use him to really quickly slam a turret up. If if you're in a defense... If you, like, you're under defense and you need one now. But the turret will die once people start to realize that it's the same for both of them. If you tackle Bastion or you tackle Torbjorn standing behind his turret, his turret head on every time, then you are obviously going to die. But the same applies to pretty much every hero in the game. You cannot just simply run up to people face first and, and hope to kill them before they kill you. you. You've got to be more clever. And all of the complaints from for Bastion that I've seen are from people who have just started playing and they see him set up and they run at him and then he mows them down, because that's what he's there for. He is for, you know, blunting head-on assaults. If you get round the side, if you're playing a hero with any mobility whatsoever, if you've got range on them, you can just wipe them out and they become completely ineffective. And yeah. we're at the point now where, I mean, we you hardly never see ever see them. Never see them. Hardly ever. No. It's like, I think, we, I think I saw maybe one during the course of this week, and that was a surprise. It was a bastion, it was just like, oh, well, someone's playing bastion, wow. It becomes it becomes out of the ordinary because they're just the fact that they're stationary just means that they they cannot deal with heroes with mobility and of course a lot of heroes have got really good the, mobility so yeah and the game is about being mobile really and it's they're, they're counterintuitive heroes to me they're stationary heroes which they need to be able to move I don't know what places they're going to do to them I don't find them that attractive to play anyway because I just they're just not that good I don't think Yeah. Uh, okay at lower levels as we said but not at high levels so the next one we've got is Hanzo now Hanzo is another one I'm going to band into the group of not being very good which might be a little bit harsh to Hanzo players so Hanzo is um, a sniper he's got a bow which has a little bit of drop off it's not too extreme so you can still generally hit where you're firing you have to hold the Left click down to pull the bow back to get maximum power. You fire the bow and it does a lot of damage. You know, it'll kill most people if you cap them in the head with it, uh, which is pretty good. He, his E ability, uh, his, his E ability, I'm going to get a bit confused, but he can change his, well, what he can do is he can change his ammunition and his bow. So he can have a sensor arrow. So he can fire this out and it's got a sensor pulse and it sees through the wall and it will show him who is near the arrow. It's not that big. So you can maybe argue as to its effectiveness, but when fired into areas where you need to see around the corner and whatever, it's pretty good. The other arrow he gets is a multi-arrow, where when he fires this and it hits a surface, it splits off into loads of arrows and bounces around the wall. Now, this is really good for taking out people who are in small rooms, especially weak people, like people like, you know, your Junkrats, your McCrees or whatever. If this thing is fired in that room, it's probably going to kill you if it hits you. His ultimate is the massive dragon he fires which again is a special arrow so when you use your ultimate he fires a special arrow and the big chinese style dragon thing swirls its way down the map and you can fire this through walls and everything and if you're caught by this it'll kill you problem with this is though you know this is coming because hanzo's yeah. like <laughs> and then he fires it and he you always know where he's firing this thing and it's very easy to dodge my biggest issue with hanzo though is i find people like widowmaker and even mccree are just better than Hanzo because Hanzo, yeah, yeah, you know, he's, I, I, um, I feel like his his ultimate, especially at the start, it's it's like horrible because you feel like there's no getting away from it. But actually, though, he's, it's very easy to get away from, and you start to work out that Hanzo fires his, his ultimate in the same place on every time on every map. Yeah. It's always at the payload. It's always at the objective. You might get the occasional Hanzo that will panic and fire it straight at your face if you if you like coming for him. But by and large, you know exactly where they're going. And I think you're right in that Widowmaker, I feel like she's just more valuable than Hanzo to the team as a whole. Because something you have to consider as well with Hanzo is he's got that sonar arrow that he can put down so you can see you know, what's going on around a certain area. But Widowmaker can do that for like the entire map with her ultimate. Now, yeah. Hanzo's ultimate is for massive damage, except it needs to be comboed with someone else who has got massive crowd control for it to be anywhere near effective. It's it's maybe a good way of getting the team to back off for, like, four seconds. See, I don't agree with that. I don't think it is. Because when it's fired, 
you know where it's coming from as soon as you see it, and you can just sidestep it, and you're not really you're not really pushed away from wherever you were. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean, so yeah. it, it's such a. I think it's so bad. Again, I see things where people are like, "Wow, Hanzo's so powerful," and I'm thinking, "No, you just these are the same people who think Bastion, Torbjorn, and Tracer are really powerful, and even Reaper. It's because they're new to the game and they're not realizing that really Hanzo, yeah, he's not that good. I mean, we're going to Widowmaker as you touched on there. So Widowmaker again, I played a lot of Widowmaker. Um, I think she needs a little bit of a nerf, to be honest, because the way Widowmaker works is when she, she her weapon is an assault rifle when you don't bring the scope up. So it's like a fast firing. It's it's almost like soldier's weapon, I guess, in that form. It's less accurate though, but it's more used for close range protection. Really, like if somebody tries to jump you, you can just try and spray them with the gun. Um, when you left click though, she brings up the scope, and the longer you hold the left click down, the shot gets charged up. Now this is very similar to Hanzo because Hanzo is still charging his shot, up, really, isn't he? When you're holding left click down, you know he's charging it, yeah. up, pulling the bow back difference with Widowmaker is she's got a scope so she can work very easily at longer ranges and she can just click on people's heads and take them out with like bang you're dead bang you're dead I think in terms of a nerf I think she needs the recharge rate to be lowered a little bit because it's a bit too quick I think uh, and interestingly if you look back at videos that were released of early overwatch gameplay before the beta was out her charge was even faster and they have nerfed it down so I think they'll probably do it again because she does yeah. seem a bit powerful her E is a poison mine which is good for chucking into an area where you know maybe a reaper might come behind or something like that yeah because it's a really good defensive it tool off. it doesn't kill people as such but it, i mean it pisses them off because it'll poison them it can also harm you as well so don't put it too close to you because if it goes off it'll poison you as well and her movement ability is a grappling hook which is good for getting her into sniper positions i mean with, with my experience with widowmaker she is viable on most maps she can rapidly kill the enemy team and you do see a lot of plays of the game as Widowmaker will be three clicks on heads and the people are dead and it's like play of the game where the maker's killed yeah. three of the enemy team you need to be highly accurate with her again going back to if you've got a counter strike kind of history you need to be able to um i mean if you can aim quick like just like with mccree and with um I suppose Hanzo kind of is in this as well, but with Soldier and characters like that, you can be massively effective with her. Yeah. And um, I think she, she and needs a bit of a nerf, but she, yeah, she's, you kind of always benefit from having a Widowmaker on your team most of the time. Yeah, and, and you can, you'll find as you, I found that it, she sort of goes from being where you expect her to be, as you, as you kind of climb up and you should play the game more. People are finding more and more like different, interesting angles from which to use Widowmaker. So you yeah. don't necessarily expect to be shot from where you shot from, because she she could be with the grappling hook. She could be on any surface that you know you can stand on at any height, at any angle. As long as she's overlooking the objective or overlooking a certain area where you have to go, you'll find yourself getting getting shot by her. And it it can be a little bit frustrating, but you know the trade off is that. She, she kind of has to maintain that range. She can defend herself at, at close range, but she's nowhere near as effective as when she's, you know, sniping you from afar. So, I, the thing is, I I would always choose to have a Widowmaker over a Hanzo because I just think she's she's got that much more utility for the team. And, uh, I mean, with the ultimate as well, that allows you well, to see It's one of the best ultimates in the game. Yeah, it's one of the best ultimates yeah. because it just... To, to, to suddenly have wall hack for your entire team is so powerful because you can just... I mean, for Widowmaker herself, she can, um, like... I've lost the word. I mean, she, she lean, lean up. That's not the word I'm after. Uh, line up, uh, that's it. Line up yeah. the headshots through the wall so you can just sit there. I mean, I do it. And you're like, oh, there they come. Bang, they're dead. Because they don't expect yeah. it. Like. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's really powerful, I think. I mean, moving on to... Um, we'll, we'll leave May. We'll do the new heroes at the end. But Junkrat. So he is probably my favorite um he he's demo man from team fortress 2 so he's got a grenade launcher uh his left shift throws a which is his movement ability but it's also an offensive ability he throws a concussion bomb which doesn't affect junk rat but when he detonates it it'll blow him up into the air it also <laughs> blows people away so you can use this defensively and offensively uh, yeah, his yeah. e is a bear trap so if you stand in it you get stuck uh, and then if you get stuck with junk rat next to you you're dead because he'll just fire his bombs into you which do a lot of damage but they bounce like they're very hard to hit people with because obviously they're bouncing bomb things um and his ultimate is a massive tire he pulls off his back called the rip tire which is a bomb which is controllable by the player so when you use this he picks it up off his back chucks it on the floor you have to make sure you're in a safe position yourself because you can get killed even though 
the, the wheel is still active, but you can die. But if you're controlling the wheel, the wheel doesn't blow up. It carries on until you detonate it. Um, and this is quite a powerful ultimate. The only problem with it is it can get shot by the enemy team, and so it detonates early. But if you can climb a wall with it or something shady and jump it onto a group's head, you can do a shitload of damage with it and take yeah. out a lot of people. But I'm going to ban Junkrat into the same kind of group as Widowmaker. Uh, and maybe Tracer, I'm going to say, which are high skill ceiling heroes because uh, yeah, if, if you don't that. know how to play Junkrat, you're, you're not very good, which again is why I think a lot of the early games where Bastion and Torbjorn and people like that are really powerful is because people are not playing Junkrat because Junkrat's too difficult to play to begin with. But once yeah. you get good with him, you can do some crazy stuff with Junkrat. And he's, I, I think he's great. I mean, he's so funny to play. I mean, you've almost got an answer to everything with Junkrat. You can chuck your bear trap at somebody, and if they fall into it, you can take them out. So if a Reaper tries to get you, you bear trap him and then wreck him. He's got a problem. Yeah, he could use his left shift to try and protect himself from it, but you've got an answer. Then you can concussion bomb yourself away and all kinds yeah. of madness. And of course, you can keep pumping damage. And you can, you can like lock down areas of the map with Junkrat because you can just keep firing bombs. Yeah, you can, which is what you can he's just shell. For. You can shell yeah. areas. It's like um, artillery, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like on a, a new Temple of Anubis. I, I love playing that map as Junkrat on attack because you can sort of stand just outside the base or just to the left or the right and you can shell the, the the last objective just constantly. And even if you're not hitting it for someone with every single shot, that still means the enemy team are unable to get to wherever you're firing because you are constantly laying down fire. The combination of his, his bear trap and the, uh, the concussion line I really like as well. I have to admit, I tend to use those in conjunction quite a lot. So you'll layer one on top of the other. So when his trap goes off and traps him in place, you then blow them up with yeah. the mind. And, I mean, I haven't played him anywhere near as long as you, but I, I really enjoy playing him. And he's also, I think because of the kind of almost indirect way you do damage, because of, you know, the way the bombs bounce and the way they've got a, like a certain trajectory and how you can't just point at someone and kill them like you can with, with most of the other most of the other heroes he's, he feels very rewarding to play like when you pull something off that is ridiculous or you kill someone from a certain range or you know you trap someone and then blow them up he feels very satisfying but he yeah. is tricky to get used to he's he's not really like he's not really like any of the other heroes in the way that his his abilities work and if you're coming from sort of the soldier 76 mccree or even like reaper style of play to junkrat it's a big adjustment to make, and I, I think you're right. I think that's why you don't tend to see him that much when you first start. But then, you know, as you start to as you start to get better and see other people who are getting better, you just start to crop up more and more. And yeah, he's he's just he's a really fun well, hero, the, the and I think most of the time is appropriate as well. Yeah, yeah, I think he works on a lot of maps. The Counter Strike mentality, when it's applied to uh, Junk Rat, just doesn't work because if you run out into the middle yeah. as Junk Rat, you're going to die because you can't fire at people. What you need to do is, if you are running out into the middle, is make sure you're detonating your concussion bomb on yourself, flying all over the place, launching your bombs, chucking your trap, making yourself hard to hit because he is very mobile, but he's very hard to be mobile. Like It's almost like um, rocket jumping with a soldier in Team Fortress 2. That's kind of how he works, only you don't damage yourself when you do concussion bomb jump. And it's kind of a bit easier to pull off than that, I think. But yeah, he's my favorite hero by far. So we're going to move into the tanks now. And uh, this has been quite a comprehensive video so far. So if you guys have been enjoying this, then uh, give it a like because I know you love it. And comment below as well. So um, yeah, let's talk about the tanks. So Reinhardt, I'll give this one to you because you are the man who plays Reinhardt. I, I absolutely love Reinhardt. And you'll see him, I think you'll see him all the way through the game. We're still seeing him now. Um, he he doesn't really, he has one ranged attack, which is on a cooldown, which I believe is his E. He has a charge attack, which is his shift. And he has a, basically a rocket booster on his back, and it propels him across the, like across the floor. And if you hit someone, technically if you hit someone, you should grab them and then slam them into the whatever wall you you end up at. Sometimes people can bounce, and it will just knock them away. Um, it's a really good disruptive ability. But his biggest strength, like his, his main reason for having a Reinhardt on your team, is his shield. So he's got a directional shield that he puts up in front of him with 2,000 health. It is very, very good for protecting things like the payload, for protecting things like the objective, or even when you're walking out of your your starting area on attack, you can have a Reinhardt at the front of the team with his shield up. He walks slow with his shield up, but you can protect the entire team from from like direct projectiles. 
it being directional, it faces the way that you're facing. So if someone comes around the side, like to the left or the right, or if someone approaches you from the back, you can still be damaged and your health will go down instead of the shield. Likewise, if you get attacked from above, and this is something that I actually found quite difficult to deal with when I first started playing the game, was Farah with her ability to fly above you because the shield does not go all the way up. It just doesn't reach that high. You know, it's got a limited like a limited range for looking up. Once you get used to how he works and uh, how the shield works, he's basically just a, a walking wall. He is really good for defensive players. His weapon isn't ranged. It's it's a massive hammer. So by necessity, it's obviously really close range. It does decent damage, but for me, I always feel like the the hammer is only really used in conjunction with his ultimate, which is a stun. So it's a it's a frontal conal AOE, if you want to go all technical with it. And it hits the ground, and anyone in the path of it gets knocked down and stunned. Ideally, if you can do it, you kind of want to get there without using your charge, because you can stun people onto the floor, charge into them, and you will pick up like a good number of the enemy team, in, like attached to your hammer, slam them into the wall and kill them. On the other hand, if you've had to use your charge to get into the team, you can stun them and then wade in and just swing your massive rocket hammer around and beat the hell out of people. He so, is I mean, it's, really... it's interesting listening to you talk about him because I'd, I've not played him that much, but you see him in every game. Like, he yeah. is a, the, yeah. the most versatile tank, I think, by far, because he can do a lot of stuff. So he can protect the payload, he can protect the team, he can help the team push. But there's nothing better than a Reinhardt standing in front of you and you just standing directly behind his shield and shooting the shit out of the enemy team because they can't hurt yeah. you. And it's it, yeah. that is so powerful. I mean, Temple of Anubis, on the... Uh, the final point, you know where there's the entrance to the final point, it's a really small choke point. Well, a Reinhardt yeah. just walking through there is invincible, effectively, and everybody behind him can just start railing away. I mean, the shield can get breached by some weapons like Winston's lightning weapon and Symmetra's weapon. Like, energy weapons go through the shields. I think Zyra's might do as well. Um, yes. But those are not really going to be that much of a problem, I don't think, like for a quick attack sort of thing. But yeah, you see him all the time, and that must mean that he's pretty good. Because if we go on to the next hero, which is Roadhog. Now, in fact, no, let's not do Roadhog. Let's do Winston, because again, he's another shield hero, a tank yeah. hero. Now, what do you think about Winston compared to Reinhardt? I think I think Winston's a lot more situational compared to Reinhardt. Reinhardt yeah, can be used for, for pretty much every map because his shield is so... It's just a really strong ability. It might be directional, but it has a lot of health and it can be used to make the team just invulnerable to damage if they're behind you. Winston is... He feels very much like a... I don't know what the, I don't know what the proper word would be. Like a breacher, almost. He's got an ability where he jumps. So, like, he throws himself forward. When he lands, he does damage. His shield, as well, is a timed thing, and it's a big dome, so you put it down, and it either lasts for a certain amount of time, or, it's get, or it gets broken by people shooting it. I feel like he is more for staying on, the, staying on the objective, or staying on the payload and dropping the shield, or alternatively, jumping into the enemy team, dumping the shield down, and trying to kill people up close. He feels like a much more disruptive hero than Reinhardt. I think he's still good, but I think he's more situational, just because yeah. of how his shield works. You see situations with, um, like, especially at the end of payload maps, where people who are playing Reinhardt will switch out to Winston and dive onto the objective and drop, deploy the shield onto it, just to protect yeah. the team while they're pushing, because it's it's really powerful for that. Because when you said about Farah, yeah, Farah can, and even Junkrat can mess up Reinhardt, where, because his shield is only in front of him. Well, they can't really do much to the dome shield the, the projectiles and god knows what just bounce off the shield so it's really powerful for that he's also really good for dislodging snipers because i mean i've played a yeah. lot as widowmaker and i hate it when winston just jumps onto me because you can't you can't kill him he jumps on you drops his shield nobody else can attack him apart from you and you're well you're paper thin and he just electrocutes you and punches to death and that's kind of what winston is he's not i wouldn't say he was the go-to tank at the start of every level it depends on it's what weird. you want to do, you know, like I'd say, I think it's... even Diva. I'd say like Diva and Reinhardt are more. Yeah, you could start for me, them off on any game and then for, start changing yeah. as the team changes. For me, I feel like you use you you'd use like Reinhardt to push the payload to the to the destination, and then Winston to finish it. That that yeah. that that seems to way seems to be the way it goes. You will see Winston's pushing the payload by dropping their shield down on top of it, but because the shield is timed, it just. 
it's it's strong. It, it's not a weak ability, and you know it covers the entire area, so you can't be attacked from above or from the back or from the side. People can walk through it if they want to. So in a way, it's sort of better than Reinhardt's shield, but in another way, it's not as good. It, it's just I just feel like he's a bit more situational. He's really good for getting that last push to take an objective or to push the payload, just because yeah. he can be very very disruptive. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can disrupt with Reinhardt. I mean, his charge is a very disruptive ability, but he doesn't have any sort of range once you're in there. You know, you commit it. You need to charge in, put your shield up, and then hope the rest of the team catches up. Or you need to start laying about with your hammer and hope people die before you do. Winston and what people need to realise as well is it is situational. You can't... Like, the game is not... There is not just pick Reinhardt and then play Reinhardt to the end of the game. Yeah, right? yeah. It might actually be better to start off with Winston on some maps, depending on what the enemy team are actually made of. That's a big part of Overwatch and something new players do need to get into their head because it's not... It isn't this game where I'm just going to play Tracer and that's it. It's no. Yeah. You need to play... You need to keep changing heroes as you play. You need to get comfortable with a good number of heroes. I mean, I'd say get comfortable with a good number of heroes across the the discipline so yeah, you can yeah. tank or you can do damage and things like that. I will so say actually as well, um, Winston's Winston's big disruptive thing is his ultimate. When he goes, oh he goes, yeah, we never spoke about that. Yeah, he yeah, goes, that, that he is... goes full chimp. <laughs> he, he gets yeah, a load mega of health. Chimp. He he grows so he's really big, and every time he punches someone, they fly through the air. It's a really good disruptive ability. But I will say, and I, I say this as someone who, who does this quite often myself, it's very easy to get tunnel vision when you're doing that, because when you hit someone, it hurts them quite a lot and it throws them. If there's no one else directly around you, it's very tempting to just go after that one person until they're dead. You really need to be using it to knock the entire enemy team away, keep them broken up, keep them kind of either focused on you or just not focused on the enemy by throwing them all over the place. You quite often see a Winston go mental and he'll chase this one person down and, yeah, and beat them to death. Off and it's but the rest waste, of the yeah. team is still yeah. there. And it's, it's very tempting to do that because, to be honest, it's very satisfying lamping people in the head as a giant gorilla. But... That isn't going to help you in the game. You, you, you no. need to use it as a team disruption, not as just, I don't like this person, so I'm going to smash his face in. Which and is that's very one of the things you do see coming in. Like when, when people first start playing Winston at lower tiers, they, they just do that. But then you start seeing, yeah. like as I said, at the end of a payload map, if Winston's got his ultimate up and he dives in, that is, you've won the game if the Winston knows what he's doing, because he'll just push everyone out of the way and your team yeah. will just go in and take the point. So the next tank is Roadhog. Now he's not a. Um, he isn't like the other tanks because Roadhog is, he's a bit different. I mean, I, I classify Roadhog as this brawler guy who is yeah. always in the fight. And he has a very strong, well, I'll let you go over it, Mr. Kirk, because I know you do enjoy playing the tanks. Well, I mean, Roadhog is, for me, he's like the backbone of, of the team. He's always, always fighting with someone. And it can be at pretty much any range as well. His main weapon is a... It's like a shotgun and he's got a short range blast and he's got a medium range blast both of them have got spread on them um in fact i'll talk about the short range one briefly in a minute his abilities are a hook which he can use to throw at the enemy and then he pulls them towards him uh it's got quite a good range on it and that brings them within range of his left click which is a short range shotgun blast he can also heal himself which is an amazing ability it, it heals a lot as well he can stay in the fight for a long time because he gets like a gas canister, sticks it in his face mask and inhales the air, which is always fun to do. And yeah. uh, his ultimate, he like, <laughs> he inserts, a, he inserts a, like a ratchet into his shotgun and just unleashes a, a load of fire at the enemy. It lasts about 10 seconds or so, I believe. Um, and it, it just, it throws them about, it knocks them back. So when it hits them, they lose control of the character and they get thrown all over the map. The one issue I have with Roadhog, he's a really good, like, he's a solid character because he can just stay in the fight and he can just prevent people from breaking up the team. He's just like a roadblock. He just stands there. You can't really shift him. He's got 600 health. He can heal you himself. You have to concentrate fire on him yeah, to kill him. Yeah, you, you, Even if, like, um, Reaper comes across him in close range, it's... I mean, Reaper has the tools to kind of deal with him, but... He hooks you, you're stunned, and he's shooting the shit out of you. You die. It, yeah, he's almost yeah. this guy where you can't take him on 1v1. He's, he's, he's there. He's, he's just basically there to at close stand range, anyway. in the way at close range. He, you can't. It's, it's difficult to break up a team that's got a good Roadhog in it because he will be wherever you are, and he will be shooting the fair. hell out of you. It almost seems to me like with the tanks, like I'd say start off as Reinhardt, get in there. Once you get the payload moving, if it's a payload map, then switch to Roadhog. 
to keep your presence on the payload. And then once you need to make the final push, you go for somebody like um, Winston. Yeah, I think that would be fair. I think it would. Because he, he just has seems so to much, me like, yeah, he's so just guy staying who's always power. there. Yeah. yeah. And with the a heal, that... he doesn't need a healer. No, he, he, he's just self-sustaining. And he can use the hook to take out enemy, like enemy, uh, enemy heroes. So if you've got someone who is there to try and disrupt the team, like Reaper or like Tracer, you land a successful hook on them and you can just kill them. You, you can just one-shot them. But the one-shot is difficult to pull off because Roadhog has a really weird thing with his gun. Yeah, but this so, is a bug though, isn't it? This is going to be fixed, surely? I think so. They have said that they intend the projectile to come out of his weapon, but it doesn't come out of his weapon at the moment. So if you, if you play Roadhog and you stand in front of a wall and you fire your left click... Uh, like your primary fire you'll notice that the projectile doesn't hit the uh, the crosshair on the screen instead it hits like down and to the right of it now this is because the projectile is supposed to be coming out of the barrel of his gun and that's you know that'd be fine because there's this little sight on the gun there's like a little metal uh, spike that you can use to judge where it's going to come out except it doesn't come out of the barrels and I've noticed this after more time than I'd like to think about sort of testing it out the projectile at extreme close range which is what the hook pulls people into actually seems to come out around his fist so around the grip of the gun as opposed to the barrels so it takes a lot of getting used to because all the other heroes when you fire the projectile goes through the crosshair I know, but my issue with this whole thing is it's a bug and it'll get fixed so it's kind of redundant talking about it I do, I do but get that it's a problem right now, but... But then, if he, if it stays with the projectile coming out of the gun, that's still mm. something to remember, because that still means True. at a certain range, well, you're going to have to aim like down and to the right, as opposed to aiming with the crosshair. Well, when I've played him, I've screamed over team speak because I've hooked somebody, and I've fucking shot and ain't killed one. Like, what the hell is going on here? It's because I've aimed yeah. with the crosshair. But I'd yeah. imagine that I'd get fixed. But yeah, Roadhog is still a really good character. The last tank, uh, before we do the healers and then just recap with well then just go into the new um, blizzcon heroes that were added um is zyra 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 Z whatever she's called Z zyra <laughs> zyra yeah so you like playing zyra and i i like her i think she's quite good but again actually you can cover this quite well for the new player she's basically why am i why is she in the game she's crap but then as you get better you think well actually she's not yeah she she starts out as <sighs> She starts out feeling quite weak. She's got two shields that she can put on. She can have a shield for herself, or she can give someone else a shield. Both of those shields make the person just immune to damage for a short amount of time. Her weapon is... The left click is a pinpoint accurate, like, beam, which it's really hard to tell what the range is. It's really difficult. Like, it, the first time you play it, you'll be trying to shoot people, you won't be doing damage, and you'll think, well, it, it looks like it's hitting, but it's not. It's a very short-range weapon, and it's not like Winston's gun, which fires lightning and sort of just hits anything around him. You have to be dead on the person for it to do any damage. The right click, though, is where she starts to become kind of quite interesting to play. Because it fires like a like a ball of energy that's basically like a grenade launcher. And it takes... She's got 100 ammo. It takes 25 each time, so you can fire four off before you need to reload. And it knocks people back or knocks them to the side. If it hits them, it disrupts their movement. And... You combine this with the shields that she's got. So going into a fight, you shield whoever is going to be taking the most damage, like whoever's leading the charge, you shield yourself. The more damage your shields take, the more powerful your gun becomes. She becomes just like an immovable object. Because you go in, you put your shields down, people are shooting you, and people still, like now, even at the level we're at now, will shoot a shielded Zara. Zarya, just out of, I think it's almost the, like out of panic. It's like, oh well, god, she's yeah. right in my face. You know what it is? The problem with it is, uh, Zarya's shields are invincible, but you don't yeah. realize this. You, everybody else's shield, you shoot it to reduce. I mean, Reinhardt's coming at you. You want to shoot his shield because it's going to make him get rid of it, or it might be if you yeah. destroy the shield, he doesn't have it. So people shoot Zarya, but what they don't realize is that's pointless because all it's doing is giving her more damage. It's not actually yeah. making the shield. Yeah, it, it collapse it's literally quickly. making her stronger. The, the more you do it, the more damage she takes with the shield up the more she's going to wreck you when she starts firing. And if you can get, like, a 100 charge on the shield, you can melt people. Uh, like, especially the, the low-health damage heroes. Yeah. They they just get they just get destroyed. Her ult as well, at, at first, it's like, well, that this isn't very good, because it's like a black hole generator. You fire it out, it lands, and it sucks the enemy team together, and, like, it brings them all into one spot. But it doesn't do any damage. So it's like, oh, this is a bit crap. 
You know, you kind of expect it to to really hurt them, or you know, it's for it to be some sort of bomb that will take health away when he disappears. But it doesn't. It just holds them together. It's a lot stronger though than it appears because you fire it off. You've got your shields up. People have been shooting you. You can lob your like alternate fire grenade things straight into it. And it does a load of damage, and it also provides a focal point for everyone else to shoot at. If you've managed and also to get like it's good for coordination, well, we talk yeah. about new teams. Don't know what they're doing. I mean, me and you, we coordinated a, a jump rat rip tire into a bloody into a Zyra ultimate and killed the whole team at the end yeah. of the point. Remember yeah. that? It was like th those are things. You, when, when we come to seeing esports with this game and all of that that comes out, you will be seeing clutch moments like that where Zyra's ult is a really good ult. I mean, you could use her ult and then fire Hanzo's thing through it everybody's dead you know anything which is an aoe a damage ult combined with her aoe crowd control ult, really powerful i think she's good though i think she i, I really like her as a tank yeah because yeah. the ability to give somebody else a shield which also benefits her if they take damage is really good because i know it's only a few seconds but that's enough time for somebody like a widow maker to just stand out of cover and just shoot somebody in the head or yeah. if you put it on to mccree and then he does his ultimate well mccree's could probably gonna be able to get his ultimate off before he dies I think she works quite well with a lot of heroes. I think she's got a, a high skill tier, though. Like, you know, a high barrier. Yeah. Uh, you have yeah. to be knowing what you're doing with her because you need to be damaging people, shielding people, shielding yourself. Know when you've got enough damage to actually then go and kill people. What, whether to use your left click, your right click, when to use your ultimate, because your ultimate can change the game if used properly. Quite complicated. So yeah. what we're going to do she's, is move on to the... Well, go on. If you've got any last words on it. She's rewarding. Yeah, when, you, yeah. when, you, when you learn how to deal... When you learn how to play her and, and work out what she's for, she's really rewarding to play because she's... She's... Again, I think in a, in a way, she's kind of like Soldier. She's not the most exciting tank. She's not the most flashy, but she can really affect the game in like a really serious way when you've got someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah. So moving on to the uh, healers or the support... First one is Lucio. Now, Lucio is, yeah, he's my favorite because he, I, I enjoy the tracer play style, the fast, rapid movement play style, and Lucio can wall run. Lucio can also, he's got two different songs he can play. The one is a healing song, which heals the team. Um, it's small, like heal over time. His other one is a speed increase um, song, so everyone moves faster by him. His E ability increases the effect of his song. So if you need a rapid burst of healing, you turn your healing song on, hit E, suddenly he's pumping it up and everybody's getting healed rapid like same applies to the movement it can make you move really quick now his attacks his left click is a a, a, a medium speed projectile i guess fires in burst of three does quite a lot of damage this does if you yeah, hit people does. with it but it's fairly hard to hit people with his right click is a close range blast from his speaker which blasts people away from you and again does quite a bit of damage and Kiri actually picked up on this, and it's a very, a very good thing to do with Lucio. You can fire your triple burst from your gun for your left click, and then you can melee attack, and then fire your triple burst. There's a, there is a window, and it's like the perfect window to melee and then fire, to melee then fire. Now you're probably thinking, why the hell does this make sense? Why would you be in the fight as Lucio? Well, Lucio is so mobile, he's dead hard to hit. You can't predict where Lucio yeah. is going to move. So when you're trying to shoot Lucio, it's dead hard because he's, he's all over the place. It's like, what the hell? And especially if it's a good Lucio, changing out to his movement song or whatever. He's all around. You tend to get in a lot of close combat situations with him. You can blast people back. You can melee them. You can shoot them. And it's a bit oh, mad. Shit, now, his ultimate fast. is a massive shield. I think it's a 500-point shield for everybody in the vicinity. This is an ultimate that wins games. This is one of these ones where if the team's together and want to make a push at the end of the map, you use your ultimate and you are like... Everyone's got 500 health extra, essentially. And that's just yeah. crazy. That is so good. Like, that is really, really good. But I don't think he's that easy to play. I mean, you no, can stand I'd there say with him, yeah. Well, go on, okay. I'd say there's quite a big... You need to be quite good to play Lucio just because of the combination of his movement and knowing when to switch out from his different songs, whether it's speed yeah. to healing or, or going back. You also need to really, really learn not to just waste the ultimate. You'll see early on Lucio is just throwing it down whenever. And it needs to be at that moment where it's going to make a difference. Because it's really tempting to just go, oh, I'm being an attack, quick, throw up the ultimate. And that, that doesn't work. That never works. You need to use it for the entire team and make it so that it's relevant to the actual objective. And, of course, the movement by itself is like... 
I don't think there's another character in the game that I've come across where you've got that combination of of speed and an accurate weapon. Like you can sprint with soldier, but you can't shoot and sprint. Lucio can move really, really quick, and he can just fire all the time. Like he's like laying down constant fire. He's really tricky to get the hang of. But again, well, yeah, he's really that, fun that's to the play. That, that's actually the thing with him. Like when you, you you keep firing with him, he's kind of like Junkrat in that way. You don't stop firing. You keep firing because often you're out in the open but it doesn't matter because you're jumping all over the place so you're hard to hit that kind of is your defense and also newer players for lucio tend to just use his heal song and don't bother with the movement what you got to realize though is movement is actually a heal as well because movement stops the other team members getting hit and that's quite yeah. good you know like i yeah. mean when, when you pop the um the pump it up for the movement song and everybody can run really quick you can rush points and do all kinds of stuff he he's he is a, a high skill um hero but I, he's by far my favorite support and the one i've played the most now the next one we've got is mercy um i'll give this one to you mr Kirill. but mercy's mercy is i think in a way almost an, an unlucky hero in a design she's very strong she provides a direct heal she can also provide a direct damage boost. She can resurrect the entire team. She's able to... Which Blizzard like, have said the resurrect will probably be nerfed because it's a bit yeah. too good. Yeah. Um, she can, like, fly to the person that she's targeting so she can, you know, swoop over to them. And, as you mentioned earlier, she's able to slow her a fall. So she, yeah. she falls really, really slowly, which is what makes the Pharah Mercy combo so powerful. She is... I'd say she's easily the simplest of the supports, by by far, easy, the, the easy. healers. She's incredibly simple, really. She does have a gun, but you will very rarely see Mercy use a gun because it does naff all damage. And you are better off boosting someone else's damage than attempting to shoot someone yourself. You'll see her all over the battlefield healing anyone who needs healing. I don't think she's that difficult to play, to be honest. I think you could pick her up very easily. Well, I think she's easy to play to a certain point but then when you want to play to a really good level it, she does get a bit more difficult because you have to try and balance when you're going to dive out and do the heal because her left shift will rapidly fire you towards anyone who needs healing um yeah but that could be out to the front line and mercy is really weak and she'll die straight away i mean like i i, I mercy is very strong mercy is very boring to play in my opinion and i don't yeah. i would never play mercy because i don't want to just sit there and I, I, I feel like I'm not doing anything even though you are doing something and your ultimate can change the game because the ultimate just brings everybody back from the dead. Now, Blizzard have said they're going to nerf this. They said it's a bit too strong, which I think I agree with. But, I, I mean, maybe yeah, something I... like they come back with reduced health. They don't come back full health and just suddenly... Because, I mean, when yeah, we spoke I... earlier about it, you were like, y y when Roadhog comes back, like when you've just killed the whole team and then you see Roadhog glowing gold in front of your face and the rest of the team, you're like, oh, please... Please. Yeah. You, you yeah. Can, you can you can wipe out the whole team, be sat on the objective, and then they all come back at full health. And and when it's like, you know, when you've had a, when you when you've got Roadhog just in your face, glowing gold, and you know that he's about to just beat the hell out of you, it's 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 demoralising. I think is probably the best way to put well, it. Because wipes out a lot of other ultimates because if you go in there, yeah. and deploy loads of ultimates to kill the other team, but Mercy's still alive. Your team would have taken damage attacking the other team. Mercy brings them all back full health, but you're reduced in health, and then they kill you. It's like it it's too good. But I think yeah. Mercy as a whole, she's she's okay apart from her, uh, her ultimate. But she is never somebody I would play. Now there will be people who will play Mercy, and I've seen some really good Mercy plays out there, uh, especially on Reddit and places like that. So she, she and she can change the game even without her crazy ultimate. She's still the damage buff is really good, especially as we said with the Farah combo. That's really good. Even like buffing people you wouldn't expect to have the damage buff. I mean, hell, buffing a Bastion is really good because Bastion does a lot of damage anyway. And if you buff yeah. a Bastion, he rips through a lot of stuff. But again, a Bastion is maybe a questionable hero to be using at later stages. The next one is um, Symmetra. Now, Symmetra got buffed because Symmetra was really boring to play and they admitted this. So what Symmetra does is she deploys defensive sentry turrets which are focused beam lasers that are really short range but she can hide them in really dodgy places so if you want to run around the corner and sort of i don't know go through a known flank route but symmetra has loaded it with turrets when you run in there you'll probably die unless you're roadhog or somebody who's really tanky and maybe can back out or at the very least it will force you to turn around and run away 
Uh, yeah. She can deploy quite a number of these. She's also got a left attack on her weapon, which is a beam. I think it automatically locks on as well. This does when people are in close range. And surprisingly, does quite a lot of damage, this does. It does, yeah. <laughs> it goes through shields as well. Her right click is a big ball of energy, the slowest moving projectile in the game. And this goes through shields and does a shitload of damage again. But if you get hit by it, it's kind of your own fault because you'll see this coming because it's a massive yeah, glowing it's... orange orb of like, what is this? You have to grab it. You have plenty of time to get away from it. It's, it's a really slow projectile and it's really, really obvious as well. It's incredibly bright. It's just like, oh God, you need to step out of the way. And her ultimate, oh, and she can also give you shields as well, which we forgot about. She can, I think she gives you 50 shield, um, which is obviously quite good. It's like a boost of health. Um, and her ultimate is, again, one of the best ultimates in the game. This is her teleporter. So she puts this down. It, I think it supports a number of people going through it before it disappears unless it gets destroyed. But for defensive teams, defending the first point, this is really good if you can manage to get it up because you can entrench yourself at the front because you move your, spo your spawn point to the, the front of the game. And for offensive teams, it's really good on the last point of the map because, again, you can move your spawn rapidly well, like up to the same level as theirs. So when you die, you're coming back just yeah. as quick. Uh, it changes games. Now... She was a little bit boring to play to begin with until Blizzard sorted her out and made her more interesting so she can deploy turrets faster and all that stuff. Now, there's some interesting plays you can do with um, some extra. So you can set up like um, multiple kill zones. When your like turret nest gets taken out, you can rapidly rebuild another one or you can put one in a cheeky position or put turrets all over the place and you become a major nuisance, especially to people like Reaper, people like Tracer, people like oh, uh, Genji, yeah. anyone who is trying to flank she can do your head in and it's like oh my god and she's, she's quite good for that she's, she's sort of on the same level in kind of a way as Lucio where she's more complex to play she isn't just the straight up healer like no, Mercy the game right there, guys. and you will yeah. there are so many places Probably for her turrets as well they're, they're quite small so they're not that easy to spot straight off but you can put them sort of just on the other side of doorways you can hide them just around corners and they'll still attack you can put them sort of almost like in almost in scenery so you walk past and suddenly you've got four beams of hate just slowing you and damaging you and it's oh god i think she's she like is, an auto include for me she she is a, a support who is really you want the teleporter you really want that that is so good she's not going to heal yeah. you but she's going to give you shields but the teleporter can change the game because it doesn't matter if you die you can come back so quick. I, mean, I can't think of any map where the turrets aren't going to be useful either no. Like when, when, you, when you first play, you might think, oh, God, these turrets don't do very much damage. They're not really there to do very much damage. They're there to just just slow progress. They just hamper you all the time. You can turn a room no, into and a trap. That's what it is. You, I mean, I've yeah. seen people who put the um, uh, the turrets onto the payload. Well, that's not very clever because they're just going to get killed. But putting them into side rooms and like places where the you know maybe a health pickup is, because people always go for the health pickup. Oh, yeah. Putting I, them around health pickups around there is just... And you die. Because you've generally got no health anyway, because you want to go and get the health yeah. pick up, don't you? And it's like, th there's interesting ways of playing her, and I think she's pretty good. So, the last support is um, Zen Yatta. This is the monk man, the robot monk. Uh, he has a really powerful ability. <laughs> so, he, he's he got a decent range damage, actually, he has um, on his left click. So, he throws like his yeah. orbs at you, like, really quick. His right click, he can charge up a number of orbs and fire a load off for like a big spike damage. And it, they're rapidly moving projectiles and they, you know, they're, they're pretty powerful when they hit you. He doesn't have much health himself. So for him to go out and start engaging people is a bit risky because he can get killed quite easily. His heal is Orb of Harmony. And this is a heal which stays on one person until you cast it on a different person. And it's a heal over time, but it's a really good heal over time. And when this thing's on you, if you're somebody like Roadhog or a tank or, you know, anyone like that, you, you're solid. You're, you're probably not going to die unless you get horrendously focused down. But his best yeah. ability for me, this isn't even his ultimate, which it, all his ultimate does is turn him into like, um, oh, man. I don't know what that Lie. Buddha style yeah. god is called, but he looks like, um, I'm just going to say Buddha. He looks like Buddha bloke and he's gold. One with all the arms. Yeah, and he's flying yeah. around. And he rapidly heals everyone around him, and he's immune and, when he does it. Yeah, he's immune. <laughs> his best ability, though, well, his, his best ability for me is the debuff. So he throws yeah. out a whole, a orb of Discord, I think it's called, and this yeah. just makes you take a... Sh I think it's 100%. It's 50% or 100%, but to be honest, even if it's just 50%, it it annihilates you. When you've got this on you, it's you were dead. A ruiner. You were just dead. Yeah, yeah. It's, especially when you, you, you're coming across... And it auto-locks on really... as well. All you do is press yeah. left shift, and he fires it out.
But yeah, you'll come across really good Zenny artists and you'll sort of you'll see them in the back and then you get the thing and it's like you've got an orb of discord and then you die. And it'll be the Zenny Arta that's killed you as well. Because his 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 projectiles do a decent amount of damage and they're quite precise as well. And they've yeah. got a decent range on it. So I, I've had so many instances where I've walked out of the doorway. The first thing I've seen is that I've got an orb of discord and then I'm dead. And I'm just it's just instant. It's like, oh my god, that's what the hell? He is a really, really good good character but again i think he is he's easily got to be one of the most sort of high skill ceiling characters because he's got so little health for a start he's only got 150 health he, That's he wants nothing. to be on the front line but he doesn't want to be on yeah. there as well so it's like yeah yeah you can you can get really frustrating games with him and you can have really good games with him i mean i've had games where i've just been killed instantly and i'm like right so i'm running back so the team hasn't got a support and then i get killed again and then you start getting frustrated it's like fucking hell well you're floating back because he's on your and i'm like this is this is really annoying me but then there's other games where you seem to be in control of the situation keep on top of the flow of the game i mean we spoke about roadhog being this big wall of like meat who's practically impossible to kill well if he's got an orb of discord on him uh he's dead because you'll just yeah. blow him away i mean and if he's it, got it, the uh, if he's got the orb of it's the orb of harmony isn't it for healing yeah um it, he becomes even more difficult to kill <laughs> because he's constantly getting healed yeah and he's got his own heel, and it's just... And the same oh, applies God. to every he character he deals with. I mean, so let's just talk about the three new ones that have been added. So, first one we'll talk about is May. So, she's the, the new defensive... She's kind of defensive tank, close range, I'll kill everybody hero. Um, so, she's the Ice Queen of Overwatch, and she has a massive wall she can deploy, which blocks everything <laughs> uh, she has a left click attack which is a beam attack which is much like um zaya's attack where you can't tell the range it's really hard to see to actually gauge how far the beam's coming out of the the gun yeah yeah this freezes you after it's been applied to you for a couple of seconds and freezes you solid so you can't move uh, her right click is an icicle which does a shitload of damage but it's kind of hard to aim with because it's got like a a fire time when you when you right click it sort of goes cool and then fires a combo to do with it though is freeze people, left click, and then right click on the head because it's easy to line up the headshot at point <laughs> yeah. that range, and they die. And she's got this little smile on her face when she does it. She's like, <laughs> and you're just dead. It's like okay. Her ultimate is, well, I'll, I'll go over a left shift first. Turns her into an ice block. So if you play World of Warcraft, you'll know what this is. If you're a mage, you just turn yourself into a block of ice and you take no damage. She also heals herself when she's in the ice block, which is pretty good. But she takes no damage. So there are really good things you can do with this kind of combo. So if you're on the point and your team's dead. Now I've done this on Hannah Moore on the first point. You can wall yourself in. When your wall goes, you can turn yourself into the ice block. <laughs> then your wall will be back up. Then you can like wall. <laughs> and then maybe you can use your ultimate, which is she throws this drone off her back. And it casts a blizzard and freezes everyone in an AoE. You're not killing them, but you're just delaying them over and over again, contesting the point, and your team come back. I, when we say about auto-include heroes, uh, she's dangerously close to being auto-include just because yeah. she... Yeah. She nobody can take her on at close range unless you, you sort of jump her or she's being attacked by multiple people. Because she can slow you, she can freeze you, and she can wall you off. I mean, you know, like Reinhardt goes to charge, you can just be like, no, and put the wall in his yeah, face. Yeah. <laughs> it's crushing <laughs> as well, it's not for God's sake. I was just I was so close. Yeah, she's she's a really strong hero. I think she does still have her she still does have her weaknesses. Like she can get wrecked at range. Um, that seems to be the way that most people deal with her, from what I've seen so far. Is yeah. you'll have just people who just pour fire into her from from a range where she can't actually do anything but wall or block herself off. The wall is good, but it can be destroyed by 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 gunfire. The block is really good and it can't be destroyed. But while she's standing there still, you can use different heroes to sort of lay stuff down, like Junkrat, for instance. Yeah, I've I've had multiple games where I've come across May and I've been playing Junkrat, and if I can avoid being frozen, which immediately is quite difficult, and she goes into her ice block and you throw down the trap right on her, and then throw down your concussion mine right on her, as soon as she comes out of the trap, she's dead. She just dies because she's been trapped in place, and she had no way of avoiding that trap being put down. It's more of a, that, is... that's that, when you see like new May players, they'll do it out of desperation. They're trying to fight you one yeah. v one away from the team, and they'll ice block the south, and you're just like, okay, you're dead now. Because even though it heals you, 
I'm just going to absolutely rail the shit out of you in the head as soon as yeah. this drops. It's it's the ones who stay use with it defensively the yeah. and and just keep blocking you off and just it, it's just May is she's all about survival. I think she she's just there to permanently make it as difficult as possible for the other team to achieve what they want to achieve, whether it's by walling them off or by freezing them in place or by getting you know fairly high damage targets by themselves and freezing them and then shooting them in the head. If you can get the jump on someone with May, then you you can really, really mess them up. Yeah, Even yeah, if you yeah. can't quite kill them, you can you can push them back because they can't you can't carry on because they've got like ten health left and you know what you're gonna do? You've got to leave. Otherwise you'll end up dead. She's she is a strong hero. I think she is very close I, to being I, I also mean, include, I, but I'm trying to think I, I think she's strong, but I I don't know whether she needs to be nerfed though, because I look at her and I know I know that it's you're getting close range, you're asking to be killed by May. But there yeah. are times you can get in close range and still sort of deal with her. Because you've got to remember, yeah. a lot of this isn't 1v1. You know, it'll be, you have to look for an opportunity to get in there and do the damage. Her wall is quite good, but it doesn't last for ages. So it's not like she's just permanently blocking you off. Her ultimate is really good, but she has to be quite close to chuck it down. It's not like she can throw it across the map. So she has to put herself in harm way for it. Which, yeah. again, is kind of risky. I think she's good though, and I, I think she's really close to being like an auto include, I'd say, but I, I don't know. Maybe she almost is. But let's move on to um, let's go to Diva now. Diva is an interesting one. So she is a StarCraft Two pro gamer, which I think is comedy gold off Blizzard, and um, she is uh, uh, she drives a big fuck off mech that's pink and looks stupid. If you ask me, I don't really like the design of it. I mean, I don't mind the colour in that, but it looks weird. Like, I look at I'd it, be I'm okay like, with it. I'd be okay weird. with it if it wasn't for the fact that her hands stick out from under the cockpit. That's the only thing I don't like about it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my big that's my big issue with that mech. <laughs> so she's she's a tank, and she's not a tank like the other tanks. She is. She's got the most health in the game, when you count in her out of mech health. So yeah, a mech she's got health, the shield, the, the armor, and then and then she's yeah, and then got she's 150 by herself. Yeah, so she 650, and I think Rodok's 600, isn't he? So she's got the most yeah. health. Now, in the mech, she's got a couple of abilities. So the first ability is she can, um, well, she can fire her guns, but they are point blank range. They are not ranged. They're like Reaper. You have to fire it like a meter away, but they do insane damage. They slow her down when she fires, but she endlessly fires. There's no, t you don't have to reload. Um, her E is this intercept ability which intercepts all projectiles fired at her. So she can negate a lot of damage as it comes in. And that is, it's quite a strong ability, but it's sort of easy to not, you know, well, to just not fire when you see the ability because it's so obvious when she uses it out of a mech. It's like, oh God, there's the big blue sort of layers of the defense matrix. So I'm not really yeah. going to fire at that. And it lasts for a decent amount of time. It's nothing too crazy. Um, she can. The, the, the crazy thing with the mech is the left shift is movement, and the movement is this boost, and it lasts for quite a while. You can fly anywhere, so it's like omnidirectional, and you can ram people as well when you're doing this. It yeah. doesn't do crazy damage to them, but a crazy tactic to do with her is when you see a team together, because you know you're in the mech and you've got a shitload of health, you can boost in and push people who are valuable away from the team and then murder them yeah. at close range and then probably activate your defense matrix, turn around, face the enemy so they don't damage it, and then boost away. She's this... I, I see her as this... Um, oh, and I'll just quickly go over her out-of-mech form before I blab about what I see her as. Her out-of-mech form, she is extremely weak, got 150 health, but she has a plasma pistol, which... When you hit people with this, it rapidly recharges your ultimate so you can get back into your mech dead quick because your ultimate is your yeah. your mech when you're not in the mech. But when you're in the mech, it detonates the mech, so it's like a big bomb. Um, but the plasma pistol is quite good, and I've had some really good success with her out of the mech, just like killing people because it's, it's really quite good. It's pinpoint yeah. accurate. It's fairly fast projectiles, and it does a lot of damage, and people get caught unawares by it. Um, but yeah, what do I see her as? To begin with, I said she's this very situational tank and I'd only take her in certain situations, you know, maybe to remove trench, like entrenched snipers or something like that. Uh, but after playing with her, I, I've realized that, no, she can you can just play her on any map because what she is, is she's this tank assassin. So she's a tank yeah. who is an assassin who can just murder everybody at close range. So you just care little for your well-being. You fly in, 
you isolate somebody, you murder them, you defense matrix, you fly away. What you don't do with her is stand on the payload or stand yeah, still she's, because you will die because she's such a massive target. Everybody shoots her. You she just can't be moving. quit. Yeah, you can, you can kind of see people who haven't played her very much because they'll try and play her like a traditional tank, like the other tanks in the game where it's like, I'm going to stand here and protect the team. She's not for that. She's like... The manoeuvrability and the ability to flank people and and get into them and knock them away, or just to just to fly around the side, you know, you can use it to get into some really interesting places. That boost, and you can just find people, absolutely destroy them close range, and then get back into the main part of the fight. And you can still like the defense matrix can still be used like a like a shield. It's really good against certain alts, like um, like against Reaper's ult, for instance. She can she can negate Reaper's ult. She can negate Farah's ult. Just because when they fire, it intercepts all the projectiles. Yeah, McCree, and they don't hit um, McCree, soldier. Yeah she, she, yeah, she puts, and she's good for dealing with turrets as well. So if yeah. anybody was using Bastion or using uh, Torbjorn, you can just turn that thing on, run towards them, and wreck them because they can't. Yeah. I mean, it, you can actually kill. I think you can kill Bastion's level two turret. Uh, not Bastion, sorry, Torbjorn's level two turret and Torbjorn with your mech if you've got full health by just jumping yeah. onto it and shooting it point blank, and they'll both die. Which is. She's, uh, she, crazy she is enjoyable she, yeah, to play but she, it's just the, the the play style is very different she, it's different to all the other tanks and i don't think you can i don't think you could play her just as a traditional kind of stand there and take it tank and be successful you've really got to play to her strengths and you know the strength is the maneuverability one thing i will say about the ultimate is when you first come up against her the ultimate seems kind of strong but it's actually not that i don't think it's that good to be honest no it, it, it is detonates think, no, the no, no 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 hang on this ultimate's really good. The reason it, you don't think it's very good, like a lot of people don't think it's very good, because it doesn't kill anyone. But you know what it does do? It fucking gets rid of people where you don't want them to be. On payload maps, you chuck the ultimate in. You can't kill it. The mech's there, and it's got the big exclamation mark on it, and it's invincible. You can't move it out of the way. It also blocks people as well. I know it's not massive, so it's not like it's Maze Ice Wall, but everyone runs away, and you have to fucking run away because I don't know what the area of effect on it is, but it is it's stupidly big. So you run off, don't you? You push you away from yeah. the point there, and then your team can get in. It's, I think that's the way to view it, because I was viewing it like you. I was trying to kill people with it. I was trying to launch it into the team, because you can do the combo, can't you, where you jump, you yeah, do that yeah. shift, and then press your Q. You jump out the back of your mech, and your mech flies forward like this missile, don't it, and hits the ground, and then it kills no one, and you're like, oh, what have I done? Of course, you can recast the mech to get back into it, but I think that's the way to view it. And this is interesting, because this is sort of like what Overwatch does, where you... When you initially see a hero and you play a hero, you think one thing. But then as you get used to what's going on and see ways of playing the hero, you, you then suddenly realize, yeah, I hang on a minute, that actually, it might yeah, not it's be... Just, you're right, it's, it's more of a denial tool, ain't it? It's, it's, not, a, it's not a direct yeah. method of getting rid of the other team permanently. It's a way to shift them out of the way. Because your team isn't damaged by it. You are. I mean, you if you are, dump yeah. the mech, you need, to, you need to make sure that you're not within range of the blast. But, yeah, that, I mean, that, yeah... Yeah, that makes sense. So the last one, uh, Genji Blow. So this again, guys, it's been quite a long video. I, I was contemplating cutting this up into smaller videos, but I'm just going to leave it as it is because if anyone is interested in what a couple of guys who've played the Overwatch beat for you know over 100 hours think on the heroes, because I, I guess the reason behind this was a lot of people, as I said partway through this, I'd see people on Twitter talking about Tracer being OP and so-and-so being OP and Bastion being OP, and I'm thinking they're really not, and I'd like to give you our opinions after we've actually played it to a decent level and we haven't just played it for a few hours and then started moaning on Twitter or posting on Reddit going, oh god, so many, you know, Reapers OP or whatever. Yeah. But talking of OP, there is an OP character in the game. Uh, I'm there afraid. Is. A disgustingly OP character, and this is Genji, and this is why we left him to the end. Uh, so Genji, um... He throws shurikens. Don't you laugh, boy. He throws shurikens. He's left click. He throws three shurikens, rapid succession, pinpoint accurate, no drop off, maximum range as far as the eye can see. His right mouse button, he throws them in a fan pattern. So he throws three out again in front of you. It's like a, it's good for dealing with groups of people at close range. It's not too good at, at longer range, I guess, because you'd be using your left click. His E pulls out his sword, reflects all incoming projectiles back to where they came from. And they kill you if they hit you. If you fire at him and he reflects your shot, it damages you. His left shift is a dash. Whereas if he hits you, he applies a bleed effect on you, which is fucking annoying. And he also cuts you as well. So he cuts you for damage, applies a bleed effect. This, though, can be used in any direction. So you can aim up yep. in the sky and dash into the sky. 
He also double jumps as well, which is his trait. So you, you just press space bar twice and he double jumps. Um, his ultimate, right there, he pulls his sword, his crazy katana off his back, and he just runs around cutting people with it. You use it in conjunction with your E and your dash. You can rapidly sprint around cutting people to pieces because it does massive damage. Now, you're probably thinking, well, why the fuck you know? I just think this guy's OP style. Well, I'll let Mr. Kiryu tell you. Because, <laughs> uh, well, Christ. There's, there's, there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, his, his dash is both an offensive mechanism and a defensive mechanism and an escape mechanism. So he can... He can dash through you in any direction. He can dash away from you. He can dash up. He can dash to the side. If you look at Tracer, her blink only works on one plane. You can't blink into the sky or, you know, blink up onto a balcony. So Blizzard it, obviously know that bl blinking up and down anywhere would be OP. Yeah, but Genji can do that. And it's, it's not just yeah, that's that he can do that. It's that the blink also damages you as well. Um, yeah. So it makes him it makes him hyper maneuverable because he can get anywhere on the map because he can jump higher. And he can use his dash to get to places that you, you know, you wouldn't oh, think. Oh, he can walk climb as well, like Hanzo. And he can, yeah. So he can walk climb as well. So he, he can just get wherever he likes. So he's ultra maneuverable. He's incredibly survivable with his uh, with his E with his deflect, because it's basically Diva's ability for shooting down projectiles. Except Diva just shoots them down, whereas Genji reflects it back onto you. So if you start firing at Genji whilst he's attacking you from the front, you're going to get hit by your own projectiles. Then he'll be on top of you. And then he can dash See, through you. Okay, so Divas is a much wider of effect and it shoots down a lot of stuff. It's it's way better for team defensive. The problem with Genji is on Overwatch, when you see somebody, you shoot them, don't you? You ain't got time yeah. to think, oh, I'll just wait for Genji to use his, his thing because maybe he's used it or whatever he's going to attack you. If, if I'm Junkrat and I turn around and Genji's coming in at me, I'm just going to start firing at him. But of course... He's got enough time there to press E because it's instant and he pulls out his sword, knocks back all my projectiles and kills me. And it's like, okay, but it happens all the time with him. It is it is defensive. Yeah. And you know what? He can reflect Farrah's projectiles back at her when she's using her ultimate and kill her in the air. And it, um, McCree, you'd think McCree could kill this guy in close combat. No, because he just reflects McCree's flashbang and then kills McCree. Oh, it, man. My issue Lied. with him is he's too mobile. Yeah. He does too much damage. His... All his defensive Wait, abilities, which you could argue his shift is a defensive ability because he sprints away from, I guess, combat. And his yeah, E yeah. is obviously defensive, are offensive as well. So while he's defending himself, he's killing you, which nobody else does. You know, look at Junkrat. If he gets you it gets you in his trap, uh, you're just stuck. He's not killing you, is he? I mean, okay, if he's close, he will. Um, I guess maybe Widowmaker's mind does damage you a little bit. Uh, Tracer's blink. She's not blinking through you and electrocuting you, is she? No, she's just blinking and that's it yeah he is out of control because you take he's in every game tracer is not played anymore because why would you play tracer when you could play genji yeah and why would you play one genji when you could play two genjis like how do you deal with a genji it's hard to snipe him because he's too fast somebody like you could say well just kill him with roadhog well if roadhog grabs him he'll just dash through roadhog in fact if roadhog grabs him he'll just press e deflect the shotgun back dash through roadhog and then he's too far away from roadhog to damage him and he'll chuck his shurikens into him until he dies yeah um, and that's the it, other thing as well it, there, there is a viable way to kill everybody with genji and it's very hard for them to kill him back yeah that's the thing he's like he is he's too good at every range you know he can kill people from miles away because he's got no drop off on his shurikens so he can, you know, he can. They're really precise. They're pinpoint accurate. They can hit anything at any range, and they do a decent amount of damage. When he throws the three at once, if you're playing a larger character like Roadhog or like Diva or anyone like that, if all three shurikens hit you at once, then it's like the so same as being hit yeah, by a shotgun. Yeah, but that doesn't even matter because the left click throws three out dead quick at point in in quick succession. So oh yeah, but the, the right click is like the instant burst, isn't it? So when you when you when he comes in. He can get in really close by reflecting your projectiles back. He can chuck the three straight into you, so you've got that big spike of instant damage. There's no delay between the uh, between the shurikens. Dashes through you. You're like, oh shit, what the hell? You try and turn around. By the time you turn around, he's chucked another three for another like shotgun spike of damage. By which point, is he's probably recharged and he can just reflect it again. He's just too strong in in, in every quarter. It doesn't matter who you're fighting him, fighting him with. He, he just he can kill everybody, but. No one really has a skill set that can fight and back. No, I mean, we, we, I mean, when we spoke again about like newer players playing people and then like thinking Bastion's OP and whatnot, um, we initially kind of had the 
the other it was the other way around with Genji. Like I played Genji first time and I played him on the stream and I, I did really well and it's actually a video on the channel and they show you me just killing everyone I'm like wow this is really good and I'm thinking to myself at the time oh I was quite good with him because I'm good with Tracer and Tracer's really fast movement like I'm, I'm kind of good with heroes like that um, but then I started just playing other heroes and, and whatever and then as the time goes on and you see more people playing Genji and you start playing him more you start to realise that actually Genji isn't just this like I mean so to begin with, we thought that Genji was probably the weakest one out of the new yeah. heroes, yeah? We thought Mei was amazing and D.Va was alright and then Genji was just like, oh, I just not a DPS guy. Actually, D.Va and, and Mei I'd put like on equal setting, I'd say. That they're pretty good and pretty usable and I don't think they need nerfing. But then Genji, when you get good with Genji, you just win the game. And I don't think that's what Blizzard want. I don't think they want yeah. a hero that somebody can play who's competent with it and win the entire game because they've killed everybody. Genji, yeah. I mean, you'd say about Reaper getting play of the game 90% of the time when you start the game. Genji gets play of the game all the time at the higher levels because Genji will... And it'll always be his ultimate with the sword. It'll be Genji dashes in, uses his ultimate because you can't stop him dashing in. Cuts up Mercy, cuts up... I don't know, Tracer, cuts up bloody Hanzo, kills a tank, jumps out, shoots somebody with his shurikens, and it's like, what? I mean, Tracer yeah. can jump in on you, chuck a bomb, but it's only going to kill one person most of the time, unless people stand on top of each other, or, you know, you've got Zyra's ultimate that's gone off, and you chucked your bomb into that, at which point it'll kill yeah, everyone. Yeah. But it's like... He's, there's he's also there's good. also the very telling thing of the three heroes were introduced, and for like a couple of days, you always saw those heroes in the game. Now, though... You, you tend to see Mei a fair bit. You don't see D.Va that often. Genji is in every game on both teams. Well, I'd say Mei and D.Va are fairly similar. But yeah, Genji is in every game. Every it's game. just it's always there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what map. Well, it doesn't the matter only what's counter happening. to Genji is Genji. So it's there. like I'm, I'm Genji. They've got a Genji. We've got a Genji. I mean, you could say, well, okay, that. Why well, moan about this style? Overwatch is a game designed where you can counter the other team because you can change your hero. So just play Genji. But then. <laughs> All it takes is somebody else to play Genji, and then it's just Genji yeah. Wars. It's not, it's not yeah. Overwatch it's anymore. Like, and it's like, you, you can't. It just it baffles me a little bit because they did nerf McCree because he was too strong, long, short, and mid range. But Genji is a character that can kill from long range, from medium range, Genji's from short left. range, and can survive being attacked by every hero at all of those ranges. And it's I just don't I don't understand where the where the idea came from. Like at first I thought, what about May? I mean May could probably wreck him because she can freeze him in place. He's yeah. too quick for May. He, like she just, he just dashes through it, and that's that's part of the problem. It's the abilities that he's got. Well, it's like he can't deflect beam attacks. Of... He can't deflect beam attacks. So her left click, he can't deflect it. But that's not really the problem because, as you said, he will just dash away. Yeah. Uh, unless you yeah. get really lucky and catch him when he's got his dash on cooldown, and you freeze him because then you'll kill him if you right click on his head. But you know, these yeah. are... I, 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 McCree should be able to kill him, but McCree gets wrecked by him. I mean, McCree is, the, as we said at the very start of this, McCree is the DPS guy who kills the other DPS at close range and at medium yeah. range and can wreck them fairly good at long range. Was, was too good, but then got railed in. Or reeled in. Yeah, Genji. Genji's the only issue I've got with the game right now. And it was get, I was getting a little bit sour, and I was like, wow, I, I don't really want to play the game because year. I'm just getting killed by Genjis. And I don't want to play Genji. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it, well, at the time, I didn't want to play him. I do think he's enjoyable to play, and I think he's this whole, like, cool cyber ninja shit. That's why he's in the game. What yeah. do you do to him to nerf him, I think? I mean, this is the, the question. Well, his E needs to not reflect back to the target. It just needs to deflect instead of reflect. So yeah. the projectiles just go off anywhere. Um, the shift either needs to not do as much damage needs or to not be not vertical. Be not be vertical, yeah. yeah. If, it, if it was the same as Tracer's blink. Because the thing is, like, like, as you said, you don't see Tracer now. Because there's no point taking Tracer when no, you can take Genji. No point. Genji yeah. is more survivable, he's more manoeuvrable. He, 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 you know, he does... I'd say he does more damage, easily. Because he's got all the range as well. He's not just an up-close hero. You can... you can. I seem to find this on uh, Numbani more, more often than any other map. But there'll be a Genji on a balcony, like, halfway down the street. And he can kill you with his shurikens. Tracer cannot kill you from that distance. But if you wanted to, he didn't need to kill you from there because he could just get in your face and still survive the way that Tracer would. So it's 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 a bit it's a bit bizarre to me that they introduced him having nerfed McCree for having the same kind of issue. But I'd say Genji is worse just because of how survivable he is. Um, yeah, I, 
I think you're right. Take the take the reflect off. Just make it deflect. Make it so he can't use that dash on any on every single plane. Like he can't go vertical or hor or any of that. Just make it so it's on the level, so it's just a horizontal. I don't and, think it's that much of a problem. Well, really, give him range because... drop off on his shurikens as well. He shouldn't be able to throw them, like pinpoint yeah. accurate at any range. Yeah, it seems a bit crazy that he, you know, he can throw them at any range pinpoint accurate, but Hanzo has got drop off on his arrows. That, yeah. that seems a bit a bit mad to me. It, it might be um, something to do with actually... the fact he's a robot, so he's like throwing them, you know, at super strength uh, yeah, or something yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. I don't think his ult is that much of a problem because I think if you took away the 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 reflective part and the you know yeah. omnidirectional part of his dash, you'd be more you know you'd be able well, to he, deal with him when he's yeah. got his ult up. But the ult the, the ult is a problem in his current state because he, he he's not he doesn't just use his ultimate to kill you. He's not like click one button. He, he uses everything in conjunction with the ultimate, and yeah. It's, yeah. suddenly you've got this invincible guy reflecting your attacks. You're trying to kill him, dashing all over you, cutting you with a sword. It's like uh, 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 and then four people are dead, and it's like uh, 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 okay. Yeah. And there's, <laughs> they, they, they cannot there should not be a hero in any game where the only way to like a hundred percent counter that hero is by having that hero on your team. That's that, that. It shouldn't be how it works. There should be someone where it's like, okay, they've got a Genji. I'm going to pick this guy because it counters him. Because that's how it works for everyone else. You know, there's counters to everyone else in the game in the form of multiple heroes. But I've, I have yet to see anyone that that you know can stand up against Genji one v one and actually come out on top. And that shouldn't be the case. There should always well, be someone I that can beat the guy you're playing. I think it's going to be interesting to see how what Blizzard do to sort him out, or maybe they just leave him. I don't know. Maybe in a few weeks' time, we're thinking back to what we said about him, just and thinking, well, actually, there is a way of dealing with him. We just didn't really work it out. But we'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a comprehensive overview of the heroes so far in Overwatch and what we feel about them based on a combined. <laughs> easy over 100 hours plus i mean as i say i'm like 60 70 hours on my own and kiri's the same i mean it's more like 150 hours to be honest um i'd like to know if you like this style of content because this is kind of it's almost podcasty this is what we've just done but it's been more focused yeah. on one subject hell we could maybe do an overwatch podcast but anyway i'd like to know what you think about this if you're playing the beta this weekend what do you think uh has this video helped you if you listen to it if you're playing the game maybe i don't know um would you like to see more stuff like this um and yeah, if you like the video, give it a like, guys. We've been Styloser and Kirioff. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at UnitLostGame, and you can follow Kirioff. He is at Kirioff. And, um, well, we'll uh, see you on the next one, eh, Mr. Kirioff? Doodaloo. Oh, baby, doodaloo. Yeah.